Good morning parishioners of St. Francis and welcome to this uh, little video. Over the years, St. Francis has really been privileged to welcome into our community members of the diplomatic corps from all over the world. We've had numbers of people join us and not just come to our services but really become part of our community and we've got to know them and they've got to know us and it's been wonderful. The latest addition to our diplomatic corps is Lindsay and Paul Yesko. Paul arrived in South Africa in about July last year and I happened to meet him. Unfortunately, he's able, unable to be with us this morning, but he has become part of our men's fellowship. He's become very much a part of our outreach program, working with Rusty and Diana and Sunnyside last year. And Lindsay joined him uh, earlier this year, all the way from Canada. So welcome, Lindsay. It's really good to have you here. Thank you. Um, and I believe you know more about St. Francis than we really know about you. Well, it was interesting when Paul was posted here, he, before he arrived, he said to me, now, I want you to come and join me when I'm there at some point. So I want you to choose the church that you would like us to go to, the one you want to go to. And then I'll just start going ahead of your arrival. So I went online and I looked, I searched through all the churches that would be possibilities in Pretoria. And I saw on your website something about Henry Nowen. And I also saw something about contemplative prayer. And I said, that is the church that I want to go to. <laughs> so fantastic. Paul said, fantastic. He said, okay, that's the church I'm going to go to. And when you come and join me, then you can be part of it as well. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Lindsay mentioned Henry Nowen, and I, let me take this gap to just encourage you, every one of you, to either come to our Lenten course uh, on Wednesday evenings or to tune in to the live streaming. It's based around a book written by Henry Nowen. Uh, it's called In His Name. I've had a good look at it and it's a really challenging book that really turns our worldly view on things on its head and makes us look at it through God's eyes. But Lindsay, you've got a real connection with Henry Nowen. Well, it's so interesting that this book was chosen for the Lenten study at St. Francis before I even arrived, because that was the book, the first book I ever read from Henry Nowen. Really? Yeah. It was, I started to read that book when I was handed it by one of Paul's best friends back in Washington, D.C. And he said, you need to start reading this author. This is exactly meant for you just now. And I was at a time in my life where I needed something more. I needed something different. And it wasn't so much different, um, but I just felt that there was something that had not been tapped in me in a spiritual sense up until that point. And so this friend of Paul's was actually the head of, uh, he was the chairman of the board for the large daybreak communities all over North America. And so he was very tied in because uh, that, those communities were very tied in with Henry. And so this was in January of 1996. Right. And Henry died nine months later. Correct. So the day that this friend John gave me the book, we were actually at his house with his family, and we had our kids. Paul was there with me, and we had our kids, and we were driving back home, and I started reading that book in the car. <laughs> and the tears just flowed. It just spoke to me and reached me in a way that I was not expecting and mostly in a voice that I wasn't expecting. I, I sort of, 
Um, it was such a gentle voice, such an invitational voice, such a non-judgmental voice. It was a voice just calling out in a different tone, a different disposition, and it just did bring me to tears. Yeah. Uh, and it just opened me up into a whole new different part of my life. And this was at a time where things were really good with Paul and I and with our children. But the years went by and I read more and more of Henry's books. And then we ended up in a situation of extenuating circumstances in our family. And I realized it was no mistake that I had encountered Henry and what he had to say when I did because it was so formative for me and helped me so much when we entered our own really quite devastating circumstances. I, I honestly don't know that I would have lived what we had to live in the subsequent years if I had not had this encounter, first of all, yeah. with him. It really was an encounter with Jesus through that was just um, facilitated by Henry it, because the doors were wide open. He, that he is all about us having a personal encounter with Jesus, not in terms of, you know, you're not measuring up and you're not enough mm -hmm. and you don't do this and you don't do that. It's more than that. It's, it's that... We, as human beings, are so loved by God and so sought after by God. And our way of interacting in, in the world and interacting with each other is so grounded in how we translate that love of God in, into our own understanding. So, so... Uh, what happened to us was that um, we had three children and at the age of eight one of them became very sick. So we had moved in and out of different countries. Um, we had actually, in the first 15 years of our married life, we had 15 different homes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's how many times we had moved and um, all of a sudden our middle child, Emily, our first daughter, she was actually the first girl in 40 years in my husband's family, um, started experiencing some very traumatic things in her life. We had no idea what it was. So we had two years of no idea what was going on and having a symptom, having a band-aid, having a symptom, going to a professional, getting another band-aid, but no getting to the root and then at the age of 10, I finally, we were living in Shanghai, in China at the time, and on the three worst days of SARS, <laughs> we had three very um, critical days in our family. Emily and I were medically evacuated out of Shanghai on the 24th of March of 2003, which was the first of those three terrible days of SARS. The next, and we went straight to Georgetown University Hospital in Washington, D.C., and she was diagnosed then um, a day and a half later with a terrible terminal disease. And all of this does tie into Henry because um, two and a half years after Emily's diagnosis, we were given the opportunity to move from Washington, D.C. to Toronto. And Toronto is actually where I was born. Right. It is my hometown. And I remembered that, that Hen the Henry Nouwen Society was based in Toronto and large daybreak community where Henry lived for the last 10 years of his life was also in Toronto and in every city that I've ever moved to I have always looked for somewhere that would be a sanctuary for me and so I tucked this into the back of my mind I knew the kind of people that 
the Larsh community really ministers to. I know my daughter, she lost a lot of her capacities in that first year after diagnosis and she didn't totally fit um, the kind of people that were at, at uh, large daybreak but they welcomed her in with open arms there and these were all people who knew Henry personally he he had actually passed away he passed away in September 21st of 1996 but and this was 2005 right. when we were there but that community embraced us and Emily did not live with them I was looking after her at home and she required 24-7 care. Sure. But what they did there was offer for her to come and be part of their liturgical dance group. Okay. So here I was in Toronto, back in my own home city. Paul was working, my other two children were at school, and here was Large Daybreak Community where Henry had ministered for the last 10 years of his life and I was now a mom of somebody that needed all this care. All my love and all the, my care in an extreme circumstance. And she was aware that she was going to lose her life. She had been told that by the age 13, she, that that would be as long as that she could live. So we were into quite, um, quite a devastating journey and at the same time quite an extraordinary journey and I I don't know that I would have ever had the eyes to see it for the richness of it and for the value of it and um, if I had not read anything of Henry's before and understood what he was really getting at. So here was a man who had been a Yale professor, a Harvard professor, um, just accoladed all around the world um, because he was very intelligent and very bright and, and captivated those kinds of yeah. circles. T 10 years, in 1986, so 10 years before he died, he was listening in his soul to what he felt God was asking him to do, and he felt that a shift was in order for his life, and that he was to leave behind all this accoladed, high positioned, you know, very um, prominent position. And he accepted the invitation to come and live, live with um, adults that had mental disabilities in this large community. In Toronto. Now they would the, the, the people that were living at the Arsh would not have known Henry. They wouldn't have read his books. No. And here he this This man was the beauty this gets led by God. This that. was the beauty Amazing. of it because those people couldn't have cared less about who he was in his other world. Yeah. They couldn't have cared exactly. less that he wrote books. In fact, all they wanted was him. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted his company, his love, his attention, his interactions with them. In fact, the whole way he ended up in their community was that he was just visiting, and one of their core members, as they call them, was out on the main street and, and was killed by a car. And this was absolutely devastating for the community. And Henry had just been visiting, but he's so pastoral and so amazing in situations like that. And, and he just, he was the one who was able to sit with them and cry with them really? and grieve yeah. with them and enter into the pain with them, but also to offer consolation. And to me, this is one of the things that that just spoke to me because I, I often say and think <laughs> that the one area of weakness oftentimes in church situations is this inability to minister 
the Holy Spirit's gift of consolation in times of great grief yeah. and struggle. And Henry was so aware of how human he was himself. He had his own struggles. He never hid them. He was just very upfront. And yet he, he knew the love of God in his life. And he was able to just gather, gather everyone in pain in and minister to them in a way that they knew that even though they were facing these circumstances, and this grief and mourning and loss that that there was a way to lament in a healthy way and there was a way to really receive God yeah. and it, it just was so powerful and he so he had a big learning curve I mean you can read there's a book called Adam where Henry arrives and he's the pastor supposedly or he thinks he's going to be the pastor and they and and they say oh no you're if you're going to be part of this community you are going to taste of the community you're going to have to help to look after Adam and Adam was like Emily he, he could not do one single thing for himself so you take this professor this very notoriously accoladed minister, priest, however one would, would call him, and he's all of a sudden lifting someone out of bed that can't get out of bed yeah. by themselves. He's helping them to bathe. He's attending to all their needs. And, and this is what spoke to my heart so yeah. early on of the humility of it, of coming back to ground zero in life. Mm -hmm. And realize then that, that every everything we do is sacred, and also that the people that we look at that seem to be the marginalized people, or the ones that can't do anything or can't achieve anything um, for themselves, actually are the human beings that have the greatest gifts for us. Folks, I want you to just remember what Lindsay has said. As you go through the next three weeks of Henry Nowen's book, In His Name, everything that Lindsay has said will come through and you will start to realize that Henry Nowen is not, is not writing out of academic uh, knowledge. This is personal living the life that he talks about. But back to you and Emily and Lars. Well, there's an awful lot that can be <laughs> shared. It was, it was 18 years of extraordinary journey, and we did lose our daughter just over a year ago. This is why yeah. my husband arrived here a year before I did, because we had just lost her. He already had the appointment here. He followed through with the appointment here, and I needed time back at yeah. home before I came. But um, that community was amazing. And, and even at Emily's funeral in Toronto, that liturgical dance group that she danced yeah. with, they were world famous, actually, that yeah. group, because you could not watch that group and listen to the songs that they danced to. You would have the you know, individuals in wheelchairs, and then you would have, a, they would have a, somebody assisting them and they did the most incredible choreography that um, even when the Pope came to Toronto in the early 2000s he would not speak at any of the addresses and there were two million people there to see him until the spirit movers danced first because that ministered to him so much so sure. at Emily's funeral service all the ones that she danced with, they came dancing down and they, they sang this most amazing song called Don't Be Afraid. <laughs> My love is stronger than your fear. And that was a favorite song of Henry's as well too. Do not be afraid for my love is stronger than your fear. And, and the thing is, Emily is 
buried just a few feet away from Henry really? and from the other person who actually figures more prominently in this book in the name of Jesus is Bill. Bill, Bill Van Dyke. Right. Yeah. So we know yeah. Bill. Okay. Bill was a friend of him, yeah. of Emily's and mine. Yeah. And he was amazing. And he's buried right by Emily My as well goodness. too. And and a whole group of yeah. them that used to be in the spirit movers together. So even in death they're in community yeah. together. Yeah. Guys, you need to understand how God is working in this whole scenario. Because, Lindsay, you've got very special neighbors, I believe, where you live right now in South Africa. Well, I think one thing you mentioned earlier is that nothing is by accident. And, and God has his timing for everything. So he had his timing for allowing me to hold my daughter to the very last breath, which was really a prayer that I had prayed, that I, I gave my life for looking after her, and I just really wanted to be there at the last breath. And then he had me come to South Africa. And wouldn't you know that our very next door neighbors are a mother with a 10-year-old son and a 6-year-old daughter and I've come to love them so much so I, I'm a bit emotional about it because the daughter has a huge um, condition herself. She's the most beautiful girl and it's just a scenario that I see playing out in front of me every day out of my windows that is so much reminiscent of yeah. earlier days and the mom and I, they actually, I've discovered, are wonderful Christian people. And um, some very meaningful things have happened between us. And we just know that God has brought us together for yeah. this time. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Lindsay, thank you so much for sharing your story and really welcome into our community. Thank you. We look forward to getting to know you and Paul a whole lot better. But I also believe there's another sad occasion that you're leaving in July, which is a bit earlier than you anticipated. But uh, we will use the next three months very wisely. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for listening. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on Wednesday night. Um, or watch the, the playback on YouTube afterwards. Thanks, guys.